Well, I think I want to agree with what you just said, which is that I think we're close to peak rates, but we're not quite there yet. And I think the data has to come through. And you know, perhaps unfortunately for the outlook for the credit market, you know, the data that needs to come through is is largely negative. Uh, I think they're waiting for for inflation to come down, you know, corporate profits uh, to come down as well. You know, and that's when you're going to see um, you know rates start to to trend downwards, uh, probably slowly to to begin with. And so, uh, you know, right now when I talk about leveraged finance, we're actually in a a very nice spot in terms of primary issuance, investor demand, and so on. Uh, but the outlook is uh, decidedly more mixed as we look at the second half. And what's the outlook when it comes to uh, what we're seeing around investment grade, but also around the high yield market? So, so as I said, credit spreads are still at uh, you know very uh, competitive rates. If you take a, a sort of a five year view of it, so um, you know right now there's there's kind of like a Goldilocks. I think our, our strategists are calling it the the summer squeeze. Um, and so, you know, that's a, a very conducive environment. So we've actually seen issuance, you know, go up a lot. We're 50% above last year in terms of primary issuance. Um, but I think the, the concern that, that a lot of investors have now is that looking at, you know, the outlook for the next couple of quarters, you know, that will probably change. And you're going to see credit spreads, you know, widening. And credit spreads probably widen before rates come down. So the all-in cost of financing, you know, will go up. Uh, you know, quite a bit before it comes down. And that's for both IG and for high yield. Henrik, when will the shoe drop? I mean, delinquencies, non-performing loans, uh, it just doesn't seem to have dropped yet. And actually, we still look quite benign levels. Do you expect that to come, given what you just said? Well, as you correctly point out, I think uh, you know, people have been forecasting, you know, quarter by quarter for it to happen, you know, starting in Q3, Q3 last year, then full year, then Q1. And you know, in all of those quarters, actually profitability has has outperformed expectations, uh, which is why the market, you know, from being in a sort of tough place in in uh, you know September October last year has has largely recovered. But I think now you're starting to see you know the first signs uh, that actually the ability for firms to put through price increases and maintain volumes is going to stop. And you know, some of the data that you cited earlier, you know, about uh, industrial production, you know. Obviously, the oil price, these are all leading indicators for what will happen. So I think the next wave of corporate profits uh, you know, after Q2, the reporting, that's going to be a very important moment for, for markets globally. Yeah, there's, there's a lot to unpack in what you've said and what, and what I, I need to ask you as well. Just, just one or two quick questions from me, then Karen's got one or two more. Uh, in, in terms of um, profit margins as well, Morgan Stanley is talking about the squeeze happening uh, in profit margins as well, and it's going to happen quite soon, and EPS forecasts are being lessened as well. Do we finally get this earnings recession? I mean, it has to come at some point. Uh, in fact, that's what the central banks are trying to do, right? So, so their their policy is to cool the economy, which will involve, you know, obviously profit margins being being squeezed and and volumes coming down. So, it's the explicit intention. So, it will happen. I think for for those of us in the market, you know, we're trying to look through the next recession because, in a way, you know, we we've had so long without a a sort of typical boom and bust cycle with all the the stimulus that we've seen, you know, both fiscal and monetary that it probably is ultimately healthy for the economy to see a little bit of a bust and some defaults and, and companies changing hands, because then you know, the economy will come out stronger on the other side.